I think I'm gonna start a new series of asking questions or having you guys ask questions and I answer them. Um, so the first one, it just says audio ducking. So easy as that, let's just dive in. Okay, so I made some uh, content here, so we'll just add in some footage. So let's say that that was my cut. Now I want to add a voiceover in. So we'll come over to Fairlight. I'll add in a channel here. And now I have to add in an input. Let's add my mic. Okay, so now I have my mic in here. And I have my mic here. Test. All right, so now I am just going to Put a little voice over here. Test, test. Hello. This is my voiceover. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to turn this off. And we're just going to scoot this over just a little bit. So now if we listen to this, what you'll notice is that they're both. Test, test. Hello. My voice comes in a little strong, but the, uh, so we'll just drop it down just a little bit, but overall, test, the test, audio isn't hello, down at all. this is my voiceover. Okay. So what I need to do now is I need to influence the other channel with the audio from this channel. So what I'm going to do is come into the dynamics for, uh, our track two. And what we're gonna do is send to sidechain. So sidechain is just, uh, it's it's a it's a way to send audio or a signal, an audio signal from one channel to another one, so it can affect the other channel. Uh, this is used a lot with uh, like the other audio programs. Um, this was just recently added to DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight. And then in this dynamics. We're gonna turn on the compressor and we're gonna listen now to the audio from the uh, second track. So what we can do is we can turn this threshold down and we can say how much we're gonna compress. So let's just turn it all the way down and we're just gonna compress it. So what's going to happen is this audio is gonna play normally, but because we are, this whole thing is just listening to this channel, whenever our audio comes or goes over, it's going to compress it. But the effect of the compression is going to affect this channel. So now let's listen to it. Test, test. Hello. Our this is my voiceover. Went down a lot. But what you'll notice is that it's kind of like going up and down because I have little uh, areas here where I breathe to talk again. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to adjust the different parameters for how long it holds that compression ratio and then when it releases an attack. So what I do is I just turn this up just a bit. 220 seems like it might be a good test. Test. Hello. This is my voiceover. Test, test. Hello. This is my voiceover. Actually, let's go back. And with this audio channel, I'm just going to turn that up a bit. Test, test. Hello. This is my voiceover. And the longer you have that hold, you could actually have it um, in between here. Hold it the whole time so that it because it goes up just a little bit. Test, test. Hello. This is See, it starts to go up, but then the next um, set of audio comes in and it, it drops it back down. This is my So just playing with it in every, there's not a perfect setting, depending on how fast someone talks, uh, will really depict it. Depending on how loud this audio channel is, it will um, determine how much that attack will 
will um, work. But that's kind of how to do like an auto um, ducking. So now let's go to the next question, which is uh, false color. Okay, so let's just uh, open up another timeline here and we'll go over to the color tab. And what you'll notice in here is let's change this to waveform so everything's mixed together. The left side of this, of the um, scopes here, is gonna be the left side of the frame. The right side is going to be the right side. The top is going to be the brightest point. And then the bottom is going to be the darkest point. Obviously, this shot, for the most part, is uh, pretty dark. And then you have me, which I'm right here. Now, what you'll notice in this shot, let's close some of this gallery, the timeline, and the clips. You'll notice that up here, we have a bright spot. And this is kind of brighter. I have nothing that's clipping, but this is kind of brighter. What's brighter? Is it brighter up here? Is it brighter here? Is this really bright? What what are, what are the levels here? And then on this side of my face, I have a bounce that's bouncing my uh, light that comes down. I have a bounce over here. What are the levels over here, you know, on my headphones and stuff? It's really hard to look in here and you know, try to figure out what these little points are because you have a dark area here. It's lighter here. My shirt is lighter. And then I have a really dark here. So is this completely black here? Like it's hard to determine what those um, different uh, levels are. And that's the cool thing about false color. Now, there isn't a built-in false color for DaVinci Resolve. You actually have to um, buy it it's a open effect. So let's go into, this is the one that I like using. Now I can see, here's my little chart. You know, it's the same as over here. The top is the brightest and the bottom is the darkest. We can now determine where we have hot spots. We have hot spots right in here, but it's not, um, it's not clipped yet. It's just about to be clipped. If, uh, if I was to make a node before here and turn up, now we can see we're starting to clip. We're starting to clip um, here, there. Um, our wall here is kind of brighter. And then we can go in and we can turn that off and we can see like where we're currently sitting on those levels. That's the cool thing about it. Again, it's not free, but that's how I personally use um, false color. And it just sits on this node. Obviously you don't want that node uh, when you go to deliver because it'll deliver this color but you just turn it off and turn it on when you need it if you're trying to pull something specific out um, but that's kind of how false color works or how I use false color when I'm when I'm coloring things how can I create that video or picture in text is not the problem but the wall picture or video as background that is my problem so I'm not entirely sure the question here you would just be putting the text over top of like a video. So I'm not completely sure what you mean by that. So what I ended up doing is I went and I got a couple of textures here and the website that I got the textures from this website and they say that they just want to um, be known. So there's the one texture I got. Here's the other texture I got. And, uh, Here's that shot. So I'm not exactly sure what you mean. I don't know if you mean the, the texture in the background. So all I would do is we'll just grab a solid, make the compound clip come over into fusion, and then we'll just drop these down, come into my media pool, grab this one, grab this one. Which one was this? Okay. And now all we're gonna do is just drop this on here. And there we have our um, uh, background, right? Or our wall. And then over here, this is nothing. So all we'll do is come into gradient. We'll go to radial and we'll just bring this in. So something like that. And I'll take this off so we have like a better and then for here, let's go look at that again, because I don't remember. 
Okay, so in the middle it's yellow and on the edges it's red. So we have this yellowish color on the outside. We have this reddish color, right? And then right now we're looking at them both combined. We just come into here and we'll go into luminance. Why? Okay, here we go. Whoa. So now that's kind of, I think, what you're going for. I mean, we can bring this down a little bit so it looks like that. That looks pretty close, right? Okay, maybe the red's not so, may not be so saturated. So we'll just bring the saturation levels down a bit. So something like that. And then this text, all that is, is it's just like, it's just our texture here. So we'll bring this up, texture, drop this down. Look at it over here. Actually, you know what, we'll take this and we will rotate 90. So something like that to find some good textures here. So let's go like that. We'll just grab here and then we'll grab a Boolean, come into our Boolean and then do nothing, nothing, nothing lightness. We can just take this down and then take this to luminance, take all the color out. Now we can just bring it over into here and if we make this bigger, now we have that um, value. We can move this around a bit. So something like that. And then bring this over, drop this into here. And then we now we are, we're getting, you know, some a bit of color. Come into here, contrast, something like that. I guess let's look at this okay we have a lot of black so maybe oh copy no we want to go subtract there we go all right and then we can just go a dark something of that nature right you could also use the um, texture so what I could do is I could go into um, transform come out of there and transform this as something else just because this is so big um, and come into here bring this into here and then use this so now if we look at this, we can move this around inside that text. So now we're using two things here. Hopefully I can uh, have you guys follow. So the first one that we did, we brought it in to cut up the text. So it cuts up the text and we add in alpha so that that text, as you can see, I'll just use it on the bigger one that text is cut through, right? And then we take that same um, thing and we just bring it over and add that here and we're using that cut up texture to create the rest of this. So now coming out of here, I can just add like um, a curve and we'll go to saturation luminance and then in the luminance we can do something like that and that kind of concludes this question thing this is my first one so I don't know how this goes if you want to submit your questions when I ask for them next time go here and join the Facebook group and maybe next week I'll ask for questions again you guys can submit some questions and I can answer your questions but with that being said, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this one. Again, my name's JR, and thanks for watching.